Welcome back to Tightwad Workshop. Today we're going to show you how to clean and sharpen garden secateurs. My neighbours helped me out with this collection and we've selected these two as being the best examples of the kind of problems that you're going to get when you're sharpening these secateurs. Let's just move these others out of the way and we'll get started. Let's start by having a look at these green ones. These are relatively cheap secateurs. These ones don't have any brand name on them, but they're a familiar sort of a pattern that you'll see in a lot of places. So in order to sharpen these, the first thing we want to do is take them apart and uh, clean off the rust on these blades. For this particular set, we do that with a screwdriver. Our first step is going to be to undo this locking screw. This only does one thing, it stops this uh, tensioning ratchet from unscrewing when you've got it done up correctly. Now we can undo the tensioning nut and remove this little locking plate. This, this plate just serves to locate the tensioner. It's usually a good idea now to take the spring out very carefully, otherwise it'll go spoing and land on the floor somewhere and you'll never see it again. So now we can take the two halves apart and there is our bolt. Now you'll also notice that this bolt has a square end and a round end. So it goes in from this side because we have a round hole on this jaw and then it protrudes through into this set which has the square hole. Obviously it's not going to work the other way. Now it's usually easier to clean up the back of the blade by taking it off its handle. This one's held on by a screw. Not all of them are like this. Some of them are riveted to the handle, so you just have to do the best you can. So for our next step, we're going to clean the rust off the flat side of the blade and also off this jaw. Now, this isn't a cutting edge. This just works as an anvil for the sharp cutting edge of this blade to work against. I'm going to clean these surfaces up with some sandpaper but it's a dirty job, so it's a good idea to lay a piece of paper on your workbench before you start. Now the sandpaper I'm using is nothing special, it's just a, a 120 grit. Anything around that grit will work fine. If you use anything coarser, you'll leave scratches on your blade. If you go too much finer, it's just going to clog up very quickly. Now what, usually, now what usually happens with these blades is that people don't clean them up when they're finished using them, and they, there gets to be a build-up of sap and wet material on it which eventually causes surface rust on the blades. This one's not too bad, I've actually seen a lot worse. Now to clean it off, we're just going to lay our sandpaper flat on the bench, put the flat side on the paper and rub it back and forth. Now we keep going until we've got a bit of a shiny surface here. It doesn't have to be shiny over the whole surface, but definitely around this edge you want it to be smooth and shiny. Now for this jaw, because it's still attached to the handle, we can't really rub it while it's on the bench here. So we can either put that up on something or we can use a sanding block on the sandpaper. So that's cleaned that up pretty well. Now for most purposes just doing that step will get you 9 out of 10 on the sharpness of your secateurs. Uh, you can push all the way through to getting a, an absolute hair shaving razor sharp edge but it's kind of pointless when you're going to be using these out in the garden and cutting twigs and getting you know things that have dirt on them. Your, sh your razor edge isn't going to last very long. However if you do want to go for that extra level of sharpness we'll use the oil stone and grind in a secondary bevel on this edge. Let's go ahead and do that now. We're just using dishwashing liquid on the oil stone because I found that it generally works a lot better than oil and it's easier to clean up. So as you can see on our blade, it started out as a flat blade, then it has this primary bevel ground into it. What we're going to do is grind a secondary bevel on the edge of the primary bevel. Now we do that by sitting our blade on the stone and then tilting it until it's resting on the primary bevel. Then we lift it up a tiny little bit more and we just push forward on the stone. We're not putting much downward force on this, onto the blade, we're mostly just pushing in this direction. Now because our blade is curved, I'm going to have to rotate the blade as I push it forward. I'll just repeat that a few more times. So now let's wipe that off and see how it looks. 
So hopefully you can see this here. We now have that shiny edge marking the secondary bevel that we've just ground into this blade. Now, unlike a kitchen knife, that isn't going to be super razor sharp, and it doesn't need to be because we're just trying to cut sticks. Our next step is to reassemble the parts, and then we'll make sure that we get the right tension on that bolt, and that should make these ones cut a lot better. Now, before we go any further, we're going to just put some regular three-in-one oil. So this is just the same as car engine oil. Um, if you shake it next to your ear, it should sound a bit like olive oil. I'll just do it near the mic. So it's a fairly thick oil. It'll cling to the metal parts. We'll do a little circle around here because this is where the two metal parts pivot against each other. And we'll also do a little bit along the blade and just give it a wipe over with a cloth. This will help stop it from surface rusting. Okay, so now I'll put a little bit more oil on the pivot since I just wiped it off. Now we'll get our pivot bolt. Put our jaws back together. So as you can see, the square of the bolt goes through the square in the hole. You can clean up the other parts if you want. They're not going to make it work any better though, so we're just going to carry on and finish this. The little notch in this plate is also where this thing pivots against to hold the jaws closed when you're not using them. And I'll just put the locker in place pointing out of the way for now so that that pivot bolt doesn't keep getting in the way. So now we need to set the tension on these. Now the general rule of thumb is you want it as tight as you can get it but still letting the spring open up the jaws again. So I'll put the spring back in. Now I'll tighten it up as far as I can get it by hand. Now I can't get it tight enough by hand, but you'll notice this nut has two flat sides on it. And on this particular one, we can use a 12 millimeter spanner to tighten it up a little bit more. So that's getting very close. I'll just demonstrate what happens if we go a little bit too far. So now the spring can't open the jaws up anymore. So we'll back it off just a little bit until the jaws will open. So that's pretty close. Let's put the locker in place so that that bolt can't unscrew. You need those teeth to engage with the teeth on the nut. Now if we have the tension right on this and you hold it up to your ear and operate the mechanism, it should sound like a pair of barber's scissors. I'll just hold it up to this mic and see if you can hear it. So now let's give them a test on an actual piece of pruning wood. So that's not bad, it's certainly an improvement on what they were when we started, and that's about as good as a very cheap set like this can be. So these secateurs also have this rolling mechanism on the handle, which makes them a lot more comfortable to use, but it does cost a little bit more. So these come apart in a similar way, but instead of a bolt we have this hex key holding the two pieces together. Now these guys can be a bit more difficult to take apart. I don't know if you can see there, but they have this ratchet mechanism that makes the, uh, the handle turn. So you have to open it out all the way and then rotate the handle a little bit more as you take it apart. So with this one, luckily the spring doesn't tend to jump out at you. So we have more or less the same structure with these. There's the flat blade with the sharp edge and we also have this cutting thing for it to work against. So one thing I've noticed with this one is that the blade edge is rolled over. I'll just see if I can get a nice close-up photo of it for you. This is the point of the blade, and because you don't usually do much cutting with this section, it's in fairly good condition. This is the middle of the blade, and you can see a few chips in the edge, here and here. This is the base of the blade, where most of the cutting gets done with a pair of secateurs. You can see more chips in the blade, here and here, and the edge has been rolled across in this section. If I zoom in closer, you can see that rolled edge damage more clearly. The good news is that we can fix all this damage using our oil stone. So I've had to move the stone around this way, and I've also put it onto this anti-skid matting so it won't run away from me when I'm pressing on it. So, same process as before. We'll rest the blade on the stone, 
we rotate it until we can feel the primary bevel, then we rotate it just a little bit more. And now we're going to push and rotate so that we get the whole length of the blade on the stone. Okay, so that feels a lot better. Let's have a look at it through the close-up camera and see if we've improved things. So the point of the blade still has this chip that we didn't remove, but the rest of this edge looks much smoother now. The centre section of the blade looks great. All those chips are gone and the edge is nice and smooth. I had a little trouble getting to this area of the blade on the stone, but that rolled over edge is now gone and it looks a lot better. Now these guys are a bit trickier to put back together because you have to get this ratchet ramp to engage over the, with this part. So the best way I've found to do that is to hold them like this, then you need to rotate this part until the ramp engages, and then just rotate them into position. Now we'll open them back up again and fit the spring. This is tricky. Put the spring into that hole first, and then carefully manoeuvre it into place on the pin. It's hard for me to do this and let you see at the same time. Now we can put our bolt back in. We do the same method for adjusting the tension on these that we did on the last pair. So here's the real test, let's see how they cut. Now I know you can't see the force involved there, but I can assure you that they work a lot better than the cheek pair. So there you have it, that's how to clean, sharpen and repair blade damage on bypass secateurs. I hope this has been helpful for you and I look forward to seeing you for the next one. That's all for now, thanks for watching. Tightwad Workshop is filmed in front of a live studio audience.